level. So this is this is the best we got. <laughs> Basically, Ben's a professional. Okay. I was going to say, oh, a lot of this is going over my head. Okay, that's... that's. What else fun. is new, Courtney? Wow! <laughs> Michael, we haven't had a whole conversation in so many weeks, and you do it very Courtney, but anyways, this, Courtney, this is a regular conversation. I know it is! It's so nostalgic! <laughs> um, my, Michael, Courtney, you're a scientist. Got the embodiment of straw to casting fireball. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> They burn. Can we? Can we? Adam, get out! Get the fuck out! <laughs> I don't need this. I don't need this. <laughs> yes, you do. This is called friendship. I know. It's so nostalgic. Uh, it, hurts, it hurts a little bit, but it hurts good. Uh, That's what she said. Yeah, oh my. So fuck. So anyway, uh, I'm yeah. gonna start the uh, thing. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, so anyway, uh, hello everyone, welcome, this is going to be a roundtable conversation with the people, the players, and everyone I played uh, Curse of Trod with. Uh, so say hello. Uh, first we got our DM coming out, this is uh, Michael. Hi, I'm back. Ah, that's Michael. And then we've got uh, Krusk, uh, who's playing, who's Adam. Uh, say hi, Adam. Hello. That's, hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> and then we've got, um, we've got uh, Boshak, played by Alan. Hola. And then we've got Gouda, played by Courtney. Hey! Wait, can I call myself a pungent master now? No, that is... Yeah. No. This is the only time you would call yourself a pungent master. Okay. You can it's call self-appointed. yourself all you want. Yeah. It doesn't mean anyone will acknowledge you as it. It's fine, then I just have to keep saying it to everyone until it becomes real. I don't think we're ready for that punishment. That's you right, too. I'm so proud You too, Brutus. <laughs> <laughs> um... But anyway, uh, so Still first all, when I had the chance. <laughs> so the first uh, question that I have for you guys is uh, uh, kind of fixing up some things in the video. Is there anything uh, that I kind of missed when I was making the Curse of Strahd video that you want to like clear up or talk about? Uh, first, we're going to cut out. I guess we'll start with uh, Courtney as Gouda. Uh, Winter's Crest. How dare you? How dare you? It was uh, both Shadowfane and Winter's Crest kind of didn't yes. really get talked about in the end. But yeah. I know. But particularly um, Winter Crest did not. I mean, I'm kind of glad you didn't talk about her considering how she ended up. Um, oh, yeah. No one's fault. Oh. No one's fault that she got <laughs> brutally killed by, was it 14 white attacks? White? Each, yeah. yeah. With crossbows, I, I so thought, many arrows. I, know, I thought it might have Michael. been like, I thought it actually might have been like twenty or something because it's like ten whites, each or something, and they each do two attacks or something. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what happened is she was trying to get out of a tomb. There were a bunch of whites down there, <laughs> and then she just kind of uh, went across the same bullshit. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, what yeah, happens is we did cross. No, it's because I had to, I had to specify to Michael that I was leaning over into the pit so I could see Bojack <laughs> down there. But because I did that, I was on Winter's Crest, so when I booped off of her, she had to take all the hits for me. I'm sorry. Also, another thing is Winter Crest is uh, she had two unicorns, uh, Shadowfane yes. and Winter's Crest, and they were both summoned due to the wild magic. Um, Winter Crest, Winter's Crest was summoned kind of like later on during the st- fight with Strahd, and then was promptly killed in the fight with Strahd, getting nailed with arrows. Yep. Yes. That sounds right. Mm-hmm. And then Shadowfang got unsummoned in the middle of the fight as well. Uh huh. Yeah. Thanks for the anti magic shell, Michael. Oh, thank well. you. Okay. And then we're going to go on to uh, Boshak uh, with uh, Alan. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to clarify in the videos? Uh, the biggest two I can think of were when the Burgermasters of Velaki were hanged. Uh, I just remember Boshak just laughing, and you asked him for help. Yeah, Carl asked Boshak for help, and he's just laughing and laughing. He's just having like the time of his life. It's just the funniest thing to watch the Burgermaster get hung. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just had yeah, to I... emphasize that because I feel like a lot of people were questioning that he wasn't evil enough. <laughs> and on that note, too, um, uh, Conicus, the ancient green dragon that had basically exiled Boshak. Um, he didn't destroy the lizard folk village where Boshak came from. Um, he had actually enslaved a bunch of lizard folk, which was um, Boshak's tribe. 
uh, being bored and just kind of experimenting with magic, Kanakas cursed Boshak uh, with some kind of cursed idol that basically gave him his warlock powers uh, and basically boosted his intelligence I just had as a story, because roleplay, whatever. And since the lizard folk hate intelligence, they exiled him. And he was going to eventually go back to not only kill Kanakus, but to destroy the entire lizard folk village out of vengeance. Yeah, so in my version, I was like, oh, he's going to, like, avenge his, you know, his his entire tribe and stuff like that. And it's like, in the actual version, it's like, no, he is, he's specifically going in there to kill his own family. Like, I want to yeah. get, you know, they slighted me. And so I'm coming back, but he's also, it was like, the problem is, you know, I'm kind of telling the story from like Garl's perspective and he's like, and so from my perspective, I'm thinking like, oh, it's, you know, the green dragon, you know, it's like in my notes, I said, green dragon comes in, you know, there was an attack, he lost his arm, blah, blah, blah. And so it's like, I'm thinking he's doing this for like, but Garo is thinking he's doing this for like benevolent reasons or something like that. (laughs) And um, it, it also... It also made me realize, like, we kind of didn't really talk about our backstories as much. Like, we had, I think we had, like, an out-of-character conversation, but, like, our backstories, it was not something we discussed as much, like, in, in the campaign. Not really. I don't think so. Because no. I, I had that scene at, at I think it was uh, Kazan's Tower, but it was, like, other than that, we really didn't talk about our backstories that much in character. I think it, I think I do remember having a... A discussion in game of everybody's background but it was very early on in the campaign and like it was like our second or third session of the game mm. and uh yeah from what you were saying before i don't think you wrote it down in your notes or anything so mm-hmm. well it's, it got it's it's my ben notes of like green dragon very evil scary run away fuck those guys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. uh, but anyway uh krusk uh, was there anything else that kind of got left out in the video for you? Let's see. So the whole, the um, for the most part, Krusk was right on in all of the videos. It's like I am here to slay evil. It's like, uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, that's your thing. Uh, you have the intelligence of a commoner, so yeah, you're probably not thinking too far ahead of that. And so, oh my God. Uh, the only thing that I would consider is the concept of where he turned down Bog True, where he didn't accept the final gift and to become an Oathbreaker Paladin. And uh, the main reasoning behind it was that the concept that Krusk does have a moral reason for why he's a, a paladin. Like there is, there is a heavy ethics behind it. And it, as you're talking about, like the backstories weren't talked about too much, just for a, a little, a little tiny summary is the idea that Krusk, uh, his village when he was a kid is destroyed by racist humans. And so he was hell bent on taking revenge against all humans and thought that they, they sucked. But then a traveler who happened to be under a paladin uh, of the order of Tempest taught him, no, it's not all people, you know, within all races, there, there are people who have very, very, very bad intentions. And so then Krusk becomes more of a fighter of for justice overall, no matter where it is. So when Bogtru asked him, embrace him and, um, and drop your worshiping of Tapis, then it's like, no, that's too far. That's too far. Cause at my core, that's, that's, if I embrace you, I'm not fighting for justice anymore. Mm. And that's, that's part of who I am. And so, other than yeah, that, cool. yeah, Krusk was spot on for oh, awesome. all the videos. And awesome. I loved him. Oh, awesome. He's had background motivation <laughs> in roleplay. He had background roleplay going on. What the fuck? <laughs> I didn't even know that. How did any of us knew that? What the <laughs> um, so my next question uh, that I have is, um, how did you guys feel about your characters through the thing? Like, did you did you like your characters? Like, build, alignment, class, personality, all that stuff. Uh, we're going to start with Boshak. All right. Um, it honestly was just the funniest shit. 
because I, I I made I made hit I made Boshak to like die, and I was gonna come up with a second character like on the spot and like uh, whatever. I'll talk with DM about it next session, and it, you know I ended up playing to the uh, to the intelligence. Okay, I need somebody that's that that wants to survive. That's go- going to make the smart play. That's not going to just like jump in and die. And he ended up just like surviving, and he kept on surviving. And I started having more and more fun playing with him. And it was just like, okay, now I need a character arc. Now I need a little more inspiration and and for him to like have a little more character growth, maybe just because that might be interesting. And then it was in like, okay, like I have like Boshek has all these people that are just kind of doing whatever they want and like he can't be so chaotic anymore. Um, and then it was getting towards the end and it was like everybody was fighting for the good cause, for for like for righteousness or for what they thought was right. And it was working for everybody. And then he gets rewarded with having his arm back. Um so then I was just like, hey, like that's the perfect opportunity for him to, you know, be okay with with good. And it was it was in the back of my mind, it was um, it was little stuff here and there that he would just end up being not so suicidal and so bent on vengeance, kind of like he would eventually go towards completing his task because that was his main motivation but it was it it was that kind of thing where like off screen after the game it was he was going to finish what he was doing and then what you know it was it was going to be that open-ended and like okay like i got my vengeance what's next kind of thing (laughs) but that's where he kind of led into cool um, so I actually, uh, I will answer this question next, how I feel about my character. Uh, I really liked playing a good character, uh, a good aligned who's like tries to get involved in stuff. And actually that's one of the reasons I play clerics like all the time is because it gives you an excuse to like, just talk to anyone and everyone. Cause it's like, Oh, I'm religious. You know, I'm a cleric. Like, why do you care about this person's house that's on fire or this person that's injured or other people's problems? Uh, and so I like the fact that Garo was like really like involved and thought about some of the moral like conundrums or like, uh, you know, and, uh, I definitely know like there, there is some people like who are kind of, you know, abstracted out or like, eh, I'm not really involved in that, in what's going on in Barovia. And I don't necessarily like to play characters like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's, that's Garo. Uh, then we'll go over to, uh, Krusk. Uh, <clears throat> about um how do, just the, how do you uh, feel about your characters like alignment and their personality and everything oh alignment and personality that definitely sound uh throughout the video that sounded right up as or what i just meant is like how do you feel about your characters like personality like do you did you like the way that he played would you change anything something like that let's see i think um in future games, yes. Uh, for a character like that, I think I would play him a little bit more differently. Uh, I'd speak up a little bit more. I uh, kind of had a little fun with the concept of having a zero, uh, zero mod intelligence, <laughs> and uh, having a little bit of fun with that. But um, as far as like the alignment, like I think that was uh, playing a somewhat neutral character kind of gave me a little bit more more leeway to, into looking at like the kind of god he worshiped like i did some research online about it and it's like oh you know what if instead of good he's more he's more neutral he's still fighting for justice but he's he's willing to uh be a little bit more aggressive with it like uh like with the whole concept of, of the guy on the boat when he was tossing the girl in the, in the in the lake, and it's like he holds him up and it's like, mm, mm, nope, nope, and it's like, I I will toss you in the water. Yeah, he had hard and fast rules. He's just like, no, I cannot stand this. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think playing a neutral character was was a fun 
fun experience. Yeah. Yes, I can also. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm just chime in real quick there because Krusk is actually, I think, one of the only characters that when you first started him, if I remember correctly, he came in as an oath of devotion, like lawful good character. And then very quickly, you guys like, no, I think I actually want to go for the more like in your face type of paladin, not this goody two shoes paladin. Yeah. Yeah. It went from, um, it went from Oath of Devotion to, I think it's called Oath of Vengeance. Uh, okay, got it, got it. Yeah, because one's... Does that like, sound right? Yeah, because one's more of the aggressive uh, paladin. Um, but anyway, uh, also, uh, Gouda, how did, how, did, how did you feel about your character? She's dead. She's dead. She's dead to us. We can't hear her. Where's Gouda? Oh yeah, no! Gouda. Where's Gouda? Did, Gouda did, can never did stay magic dead dad for not long. Come through this time. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Did oh, magic dad really lie? Quick, really quick. I'm really sad that every time Gouda died, Boshak never got to eat her. Because <laughs> <laughs> there were so many times that she would annoy Boshak, and I would just it was like I, I got to I got to say it I got to say it, and like Boshak will eat his party member when she dies, and exactly. he never did, and he's just so sad about that. I know it's tragic. It's it's a real shame that you didn't get to eat any of us. Where, All right, when, no, yeah, oh, there she is. Okay, no, sorry. So Gouda is a very very Gouda girl, and I love her to death. Um, I we all had to give our backstories to Michael super early on um, before we started the campaign, so he kind of build and cater the gifts to us. And as much as it broke my heart, and I cried at the sessions, um, I loved how much stress. Um, she had to go through in the camp. That sounds really ah. sadistic, but like it was. It's true. She did cry. I know. I, it's okay. The, the reason being is that Gouda for me was that kind of like otaku girl that ha- that fantasizes about adventures through like graphic scrolls and stuff. Right? Has no intelligence or wisdom uh, about real life adventuring. So like when you finally you know pick up your britches and you decide to go out and adventure, that shit's hard. It's really hard. And when we did it in Barovia, it was way worse. So I I liked how she played. Um, did I like how the fact that she was basically bound to the demi planes of dread? Eh, but she got to be the hero, and at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. You oh, also a, a I hero. Think almost got everything on the wild magic table by the end. Actually, I was just looking at that. I was missing three. Jesus. Oh, also, I know. also on that note, people were wondering why you kept pe- writing people's names down. Um, oh. oh no. Okay. <laughs> and um, so uh, there was me. a lot of the audience was thinking that you had some kind of a scheme. Onomancy. A, yeah, some kind of <laughs> onomancy or some kind of scheme where you were going to learn all of their names and then use it in some cleverly devised uh, plan of yours. <laughs> Look, one of the reasons why I love Gouda is the fact that because of her personality, she got to interact so pure-heartedly with all of the NPCs, good or bad. She did feel bad for Strahd at one point. Um, and that includes me as a player getting to fill out all the NPCs. I'm so sorry. No, I'm not sorry, Michael. Um, and badgering him to come up with names, which he already had ready, um, for all the NPCs we came in contact with. It's so, so, so rewarding. So also the Cliff Notes version is that no, she did yes. not have a plan. She l- literally just wanted to know their names because she that wants was the to know thing. <laughs> Well, I mean, to be <laughs> fair, like, they could be games. friends. <laughs> Look, this is that's agnostic of any campaign. That's just how I play. I like collecting names. I gotta <laughs> yeah. catch them all. And it paid off <laughs> so <laughs> and it paid off so well in Berez when you just kept hounding that person. So what is this lord's name? What is his name? <laughs> Actually, wait, no, that is that is that goes to your first <laughs> question. No, no. Okay, to be fair, when I hounded um It was Lavina, oh yeah. My, Lavinia, yes. Yeah, for the Lavinia. Lord's name, I swear it was because I thought she was holding back the Burgermaster's name. Because every city that we had been to um <laughs> in Barovia had a Burgermaster. So I'm like, okay, I have all of them except for Berez. Give me that name. And I thought Michael was being difficult and not giving me the name, I'm like just give me the name. What's the name? <laughs> so what she said, right. I'm like, right, oh, but I, everybody's uh, just trying to tell you right there, and like, no, wait, please, you know already, stop it. 
<laughs> like, no, I didn't. I didn't. Though. I, I mean, hey, like she was holding a notebook yeah. and writing everyone's names in. How do we not know that she has a death note? As far oh as like God. comedy wise, that was one of my favorite moments. Um, <laughs> um, I have no regrets. It's, it's, it's a no grand regrets. scheme. To oh, rule all of Barovia. Unicorn. You regret that one. No. Ashley, I regret the flumps. Oh. That, that, was, that was the cruelest thing ever. Um, why did you kid you, us, Ke- Why did you kid us, Gude? <laughs> no. You're a that terrible person, Gude. <laughs> this fireball is a terrible, wonderful spell, and... Sometimes it was not worth it, okay? Sometimes it was, and sometimes it wasn't. Uh, sometimes. So my next question is, um, how did you guys uh, feel about the tone and the ending? Well, Boshak loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's good for us. Uh, Boshak got the yeah, only Boshak, good yeah, ending. That was the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. You know, it is, you know, that was the best outcome that could have ever happened for Moshek. And oh, that's uh, there's another question involved. Was was were you guys surprised by the ending? Yes, Michael. Oh yeah, Seriously, I forgot yeah. what you did to her. So I actually, I'm probably the only person that is like completely not surprised by my character's oh my ending God. because I actually told Michael, like, look, I think this is how he's going to end. Because oh uh, at least for me, what had happened is that I remember I think it was like at episode eight or something. I basically said like, like I realized like, oh, I'm I'm receiving this power from the Fanes. You know, th- this is Barovia, and I as a player, I'm like, look, I might end up staying behind because I think like dry. I I thought they were dryads because mm-hmm. as a player, I thought that and I was like, oh no, it's the Fanes. But either way, it's like I'm getting connected to the land like i don't know if i can actually leave and i even said like in my head canon at the end of the game garo can't leave you know that is going to be my my head canon whatever you know michael decides like that's what i'm thinking is going to happen and so his and it, it was like when it kind of turned out that way it's like oh okay that's like we were on the same page or like thinking like that's exactly what's going to happen um mm-hmm. although the patrina thing came out of left field for me where i was like oh fuck, yeah and so then that was when i was like oh, okay if i'm stuck here and i i actually uh sort of ad-libbed part of the ending of saying like look my character would just become like the abbot like and part of it was because he would be broken like mentally like he would get to a point because at that at that he was like believing like oh we could get take care of strahd and then after that point and then when patrita comes up and everything starts repeating again then it's that's when he kind of gets broken where he's like okay like the reality of it sinks in. Like this is what the angel meant is that everything is going to, there's echoes, you know, of what's going to happen. And in the back mm. of your head rings that one scene that you were talking to the abbot and you solemnly walk up to him and say, I think I understand you now. Yeah. And the, the irony actually was that when I said that to the abbot, Garo was lying. Like he wasn't telling that he was saying like, Oh, I see what you, you mean now. But like it, Garo is being kind of deceptive because he's thinking like, okay, I'm gonna you know come back and kill Strahd. But it's not until after that moment when he's actually like, oh, I legitimately understand what he meant now. Of like, you can't oppose like the gods, basically, kind of a thing. Like they will just kind of fix things so that way they like you're playing a rigged game, basically. Mm. Welcome to Barovi. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that. Uh, uh, r- really quick, like I'm not too surprised at how it all turned out. Um, oh. I, I, I remember when we were getting like the last tarot card reading of all the uh, who can like rule afterwards, and um, and you pull out the card for Gouda, and I remember like player me, I was just there like, oh man. That'd be like the best ending for Barovia if Gouda is at the is is like at the top right there. Because the other two, none of the other ones would would work. The one wild card was just there was too much chance of her being crazy because she was killed and she would be resurrected and she has some kind of like vengeance plan or something or she would have some kind of grudge being dead for so long. And like that's that's what I honestly believed. 
So like player me like wanted Gouda to be on there. And I, I, I funneled that through Boshak to just kind of fuck with Gouda. Because I, I remember like the whole, I remember like the, I remember like the like five or ten minute to raid where Boshak is a, a like, but Gouda, you no. are the only one that can be the hero here. Only you can stay back and save these people. <laughs> it's the funniest shit. Because I, I honestly believed it, but I had to put it in like evil Bolshak voice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which like, is not making you receptive. You yourself here for the rest of eternity. <laughs> <laughs> little, uh, little did he know that she would also still be staying there for all eternity, just like kind of in the neighborhood. And not that. Yeah. See, yep. but the thing is, though, at least like she still gets to go off on these adventures with her friends and help. Yeah, lot. I mean, I mean, That's look, so but dying is fun because then I get a new body vacation, so it's totally fine. Um, <laughs> everything is all temporary, anyways. Um, it just really sucks that I kept hon- honing into you guys the fact that she really loves Waterdeep and she loves her family. So after all this is over, she needs a long ass vacation. She's gonna go back home and she doesn't get that. Nope. Yep. Nope. Nope. Uh so <laughs> Krusk Adam, uh how do you feel about the ending? How do you feel about your character's ending? I think the ending went right along with what Krusk would do, is that he's he wanted to continue uh just sp- smiting evil wherever he goes and it's like oh okay i want to go all throughout dread and it's like dude dude no 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 you need to you need to understand something. <laughs> uh dread's a lot bigger than you think it is it's like oh okay um i'll go for something i can handle it's like i'll i'll go with gouda because yeah. i will say actually cross gouda and um cross have the same intelligence so i don't know what that says about our characters um that we ended up together uh, group <laughs> adventuring, yeah, it, it, yeah. It might have a thing. It might, it, you know. Well, we have Esmeralda job, with so us, so she can make thing. the smart choices. <laughs> oh that's God, it. you assume Ez is staying with you guys for long? <laughs> I mean, at least until we can rescue the little wolf boy, because I promised him he'd get to go back to Faerun. Eventually, she'd just give you a scroll of remove curse, and then have to go do her own thing. But friends forever. <laughs> and you know, Gouda would try to jump on her leg again. <laughs> I remember that. So oh, many rolls. So many rolls. Gouda, you know you still owe me a new wagon, don't you? Wait, Gouda would totally make good on that. And Could she, be- she though? Without yes. blowing it up again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. We never <laughs> use gold for anything, so it has to go like a bit of waste. Everything's cheap. Like everything's sad in the demi planes of dread, so it should be cheap. No, nothing is cheap. Everything is so ab- exorbitantly expensive if you what? actually try and buy anything. Oh my God. Because nice. either the people who are making it there, it's just garbage. You wouldn't want to pay for it anyway, or what you are paying, you are paying too much for. Or it's gear they got off of dead previous adventurers, so they've marked up the prices. Or it's through the Vistani who have to leave Demi Plains to get it from somewhere and then bring it back. So it's basically a custom order. Everything's expensive. All right, look. Maybe Gouda doesn't get her the wagon just in hopes that Esmeralda never leaves her. How's that? Oh, this is a whole Ash and Misty like bike thing of like you owe me a new <laughs> wagon <laughs> and then doesn't get the wagon. <laughs> 90s Pokemon into this bitch. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, so the next question is, uh, what would you guys like if if you could? Uh, do you guys have any regrets or like there's anything that you wanted to change or like make a different character decision um, through the campaign? Any in particular? You can have multiple things that you regret. Uh, I think it was pretty happy with how everything went. <laughs> Same thing with Kresk. Um, I feel overall uh, very happy. About how it went, and it was a fun game. Yeah, it was oh really good. God. That's that is something else I want to say is that oh, it went over like there was this yeah, constant tension. It was great. We really loved it. I love the drama. So, so, so once again, claps for Michael. Yeah, you got me. Hey, 
I noticed Courtney's the one being quiet during this section. <laughs> I'm, th- I'm thinking. Okay. But you're saying though, like everything wrapped up well. There are minor things that hurt my pride as a person and Gouda. So that's why I'm being silent because it sounds super petty, and I don't want to say okay. it. Okay. So Good. if you're if you're still going to be thinking, I will answer the question because I already know mm. what I'm going to say because I got to look through okay. the questions so I can cheat. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So the thing is that for me, the one thing I regret is that. Um, Strahd had told us like, oh, hey, you can explore the castle and kind of talk to the, the wives and stuff like that. Part of me really wanted to explore the castle. Like, I really wanted to explore Ravenloft. <sighs> and yeah. um, like, it made sense why we didn't do it at the time. Because it's like, look, you know, we've been playing like, if we run into something, we might get killed here. Like, this is Ravenloft. This is we're in the lion's den right now. And we kind of wanted to get out of there as fast as possible. Um, and he said like, oh, you could take as much time, whatever, you know, but like. Could, you know, we we didn't want to st- we didn't want to stay there any longer than we had to. Um, but the problem, the thing is, is like I can look back on the campaign and say like, oh, that was kind of one our one of our few opportunities to actually like, oh, we had the time, we had the you know means to kind of do that. Um, and then when we we're getting to sort of the end of the campaign, like we we're kind of on a time crunch, and so we couldn't just like go room to room like bah, bah, like open a door and kind of explore kind of a, sort of a thing. Yeah. But but actually, I will say also, um, like most of the other stuff, I'm totally fine with. Like there were there were decisions that made because it's like, oh, our character didn't know this or like, you know, we made the decision with like what our characters knew. And that was that was totally fine. I'm perfectly happy with everything else that happened. Um, Like, for example, with the Fanes, like accepting the final gift, like my character totally would would have done that 100 percent, you know, if or even at the beginning when he died, it's like, do you want to come back? And it's like he he totally would have said yes. So that's when we go over to Courtney to Gouda. Oh, oh no. Any petty, <laughs> okay, look, we want to hear I, your petty uh, things. No. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is one of them Piddlewick? No, you're a monster. And I think that's another thing that you took out so you can hide your shame as a little dexterous character uh, in yeah, the party. Yeah, Piddlewick died. Uh, what happened is Piddlewick. Piddlewick was like, uh, the problem is I was running out of time in the um, video, but it's like we're going upstairs and we're having Piddlewick lead us and he just, he accidentally gets like walks into a trap and he's thrown down the stairs and then breaks. And what's funny is that Garo is like really upset and Garo tried. Garo like does his Kung Fu (laughs) stuff and he's trying to grab and stuff like, I didn't roll any dice, but I just said I miss. It was, it's because like. So here's this character, Piddlewick, who's going to go around and he's going to show us all the traps. And I'm like, me as a player, I'm like, girl's like, yeah. But me as a player, I'm like, uh, like not, I'm kind of like, I kind of wanted to walk into the trap and then get caught and be like, oh no. And I'm like getting dragged away and going to die hideously or something like that. And like, that's really cool. And so, um, and so I'm like, God, we got this character, Piddlewick, who's going to reveal all the traps. And so when he gets when he gets thrown down the stairs and just shatters at the bottom, um, like Garo's like, no, but player Ben is like, OK, yeah. <laughs> he gets player. Courtney was heartbroken. I'm like, how dare you all? He had to pass every single one of the party members on this staircase and only Guda rolled to try I, to save I him. I tried. No Garo <laughs> tried. He didn't. He auto failed. <laughs> he started to tear up, too. I know. <laughs> And, there's and no way we could save him. Did not have the reflexes to to try and catch him either. But no, my biggest regret. And this is where it comes into petty because I'm like, Guda wants to be on Guda terms with everybody. Is Lancelot and Gertruda? Uh, that is the thing that hurt the most at the end was that like Gertruda basically turned her back on us minus Garo until he becomes the abbot. Um, all because of a misunderstanding until Garo can clear it up. But she basically hates Gouda and that tore me up because I was the only one in the party rooting for her when we first met her as the hag and yeah the fact that she's like not Gouda or good with Gouda like hurt so bad so I'm okay with the final gifts and the dark powers it's fine I made that bed I will lie on it happily um but that hurt the most Michael you're a monster how dare you kill Lancelot he was just a good doggo oh I, that's why your evil your evil clones knew exactly how to hurt you there was 
there was the funniest line was when it's like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna cast Ray at the end. We're like, we're gonna cast Ray's dead on Lancelot, and then and then and then Michael was like, do dogs have souls? And then Bo Allen's like, yes, they do. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. They have souls. <laughs> All right, look. Player Allen, like Boshak, who just wanted another meal, he wanted to eat dog. Sure. <laughs> Player Allen, fucking heartbroken. All right, I got three dogs in the house, and I love them. And and how dare you kill it? <laughs> All right. Um, Could we have done raise dead or true resurrection on him, Michael? In hindsight, it works. Could I have asked that of <laughs> Madame Ava? Yeah, she did it for. Oh my god! I was deserved it. Oh, uh, we actually. I I remember part of it is that we had the treasury, like from um, what is it? I th- I think we had gotten like some gold from the treasury, and then we used that because it's like we're we're we now have Ravenloft the so castle. Much, yeah. We oh yeah. But, yeah. So at least until you leave, then it's Petrina's. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! god. <laughs> um. But yes, you could have raised dead Lancelot. Oh, no! no. <laughs> so, um, uh, how did you guys feel about the resurrections? Did it actually affect play at all? No. Michael is no. Gary. The resurrection? Is- resurrections. Oh, the levels three to five resurrections? Yeah. Um... I originally, yeah, you already know, like, Boshak, like, I played him to die. He didn't die once. There was, oh, there was the one, like, suicide bombing with a shatter against the guards. Oh, yeah, I remember that. that, And he almost died. But, um, uh, but he didn't. And I didn't have to worry about it. So, uh, luckily, Michael gave me the, uh, the, the ultimatum that, like, at its level five, and he hasn't got any dark powers yet, so he can just go to sleep and ask in his dreams. And say, like, hey, I want powers too. And they're like, okay, cool, you get them. There you go. Uh, done. <laughs> yeah, so he did that, and then Krusk did that. It took Krusk a while before he finally asked. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he, was, he was trying to be a purist. He was trying to go like, no, I don't need help. I can do it myself with my raw strength and training. And it, yeah, yeah, actually, um, mm, ah, mm, rethink of that thing. Uh, yeah. I just almost died. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yep. He, then he met Rahadeen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, yeah, it was right after that. Oh, my God. That will always have a certain tone in my head. He, ooh, throughout that campaign, oh, I hated him. I, say, I guess oh kind of roughly uh, going with the resurrections up as well, how, how did you guys all feel when, after you finally got that wonderful kill of Rahadin in the Amber Temple, you get to the castle and he's back? Dick move. Dick I move. actually, I would have been disappointed if he wasn't there, because I, I expect it. I expect that Strahd has that kind of like resurrection bullshit. Like he's been here. He know he's undead. He's a vampire. He knows. Like, but it's also because it's like when a that was actually one of the things that I realized about um Barovia is that like people don't stay dead. You know, like someone gets dies and they come back as a ghost or they kind they you know they get brought back. You know, there's the resurrections that happen. There's like vampires don't stay dead, and um it made me realize like when a character dies, like you lose all of that history associated with them. And so, like, when characters are kind of coming back, you can have a longer, like, narrative with them. And usually a lot of the tension does not come from those, like, core NPCs. It kind of comes from sort of the peripheral NPCs and stuff like that. So, like, like if Garo had died, like, very early on, like, he's a PC. Like, we go through PCs all the time, you know, kind of a thing. So, like, the resurrection doesn't necessarily like matter that much to me um but it's like it's usually esmeralda you know characters getting offed uh or getting turned into vampire and stuff like that where it's like no oh my god (laughs) so really quick um as boshak it was one of the few times i can i can appeal to boshak's sadism and that that was like that moment where you can just like oh i'm coming for you at the leg and it was um what i got 
like Bosch had got to eat his face at the Ember Temple, and he was and he was he couldn't walk around <laughs> with uh, without a mask on. Um, I I remember the moment where he takes it off when we're when we're, when we're chasing him down or something, and like it comes off and you describe that he doesn't have a face; it's just the muscle underneath. And it was it was like one of those few moments where I got to be where I got to be proud of playing an evil character, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you like being cruel because it's like you can oh inflict it on God. your enemies. <laughs> and it was like you know, it was player cruel. You know, it's not real. <laughs> 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 what? Good for me. I played a good evil guy. <laughs> uh, they actually there there was a funny thing. There was a, a few questions where people are asking like, would you want to do a follow up campaign or sequel to get a air quotes good ending? Ah <laughs> uh, shit! I mean, that's kind of why I left it so open ended at the end. Um, I was honestly thinking about just like writing something or, um, or just kind of like leaving it there. I, I honestly really like the, um, the fate to black and you can like invent your own ending in your imagination, whatever. But I'd be, I'd honestly be, be so interested in, uh, in playing a campaign where Bolshak maybe gets another adventuring party together to, to actually go and, um, and take care of the ancient green dragon, Kanicus. One of the things, yeah, I do actually, I really like the fact that it's like, it is kind of open-ended where it's like, it kind of goes back to square one a little bit. And it's the, the nice thing about it is because it like, you can like continue that narrative, like mentally in your head. Whereas if everything wraps up like totally fine, it's like, you know, the, it ends, you know, like there's nothing to kind of imagine beyond it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but then the, the one dangerous thing was that, like, okay, what if he dies? <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. And like, like someone can totally play, um, maybe like a sentient golem, like the one that he ended up getting, or maybe somebody can like set out Gertruda as a sorceress or a, like a warlock and and just staple the 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 hag description to her or whatever. Just, just as far as like, and like, okay, it counts as a hag. And that's it. That's as far as that goes. And like, that could be cool too. And then just get a, a couple other characters in there. Like, that could be super interesting. It, it might even be like tragic if Bolshek actually dies closer in the middle of the freaking campaign. But that by itself could be really cool. Yeah, it's, uh, I really like. Uh, for me personally, as a player, I really like kind of the tragic stuff or the, yeah. the stuff which is like <laughs> difficult choices. Um, cause I, I kind of talked a little bit about this that one of the reasons I like the ending as much as I did is because it's not like this is the good ending where you get everything you want and this is the bad everything where you lose everything. Like, which choice do you want? You know, like, well, we take the good ending. You know, it was, it's a choice where it's like, do you want A, B, C, and D where like, they're all kind of viable options. Like if there's just one option, which is everything is good, then we would just, there's no choice to be made, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure. And especially with the way, um, like, I'm, I'm really happy. Boshak made it all the way to the end too. Cause then it just, it does kind of open it up too. like, he, like Boshak is a character that played with a bunch of other really good characters he started off really evil and like he's right there in the middle right now he can just go either way Mm -hmm. yeah 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 so it's so he has a lot of options kind of at the end he's not like set in stone yeah yeah which i thought was really cool just to just kind of leave right there but uh it'd be really cool uh, so the next question is, how did you guys like your, the build of the character? Is there anything, like, what were your, like, spell choices, like, um, build options, stuff like that? Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, staying, cl- staying true to the brand. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Yes. Uh, it's my, Fireball hurts. Oh, <laughs> Actually, yeah. I... I um, I almost kind of feel like this is only like my question because it's like I think all you guys were kind of like mono class and yeah no, I, yeah I, I actually, yeah and I, I, I'm actually really happy but also sad with how Boshak turned out because oh uh, like Boshak was not 
doing a lot of damage. I didn't really focus on Eldritch Blast at all. I very rarely used it. Um, I I didn't have the variety of damaging spells that uh, that Guda had, um, and I chose what's it? Uh, Pact of the cha- like creature. Great old one, Pact of the Chain. Yeah. So it it was going to be really utility. It was going to be really role play character. Um, but then he was like an asshole chaotic evil character. And like there there wasn't going to be a whole lot of interactions where he wasn't going to be an asshole. Um so what it ended up being was like, okay, I have to capitalize on concentration spells because warlocks don't have a lot of spells. So I need something that's gonna like be there, sit there, and like probably do some damage. Um, at first, I couldn't really do that a whole lot, so I had just like shatter and a couple like damaging spells, and then I got sickening radiance, which was the go-to against everything over we here. We got was, there were so many sickening yeah. radiance, like oh, we're fighting Rahadin yeah, yeah, yeah. sickening radiance, we're fighting the yeah. Strub sickening radiance, because um, it's like it's a really big area and it hits everything and it does radiant damage. Yeah, and you know what I. I I got to play into like the more chaotic or like the more just asshole evil characters because like one or two allies would end up getting caught in it. And it was like, okay, like Bullshack probably wouldn't care, so I'm not mm-hmm. gonna care. I think yeah, and there then, was there was a line of dialogue which was like I was getting I got hit by it and then um I came out of it and it's like you're still alive and I'm like, You're a little disappointed, aren't you? He's like yeah, I, I just I thought my magic was more powerful, but apparently it isn't. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and then by the end of the campaign, when I finally get access to it, I, I start using I just start using telekinesis all the time. And yeah. it was it was it was the greatest thing because it's like, oh my god, there's an enemy. Uh-huh. I'm telekinesis you in front of the in front of the paladin. And like now the paladin just has to smite, smite, and you're dead. <laughs> uh-huh. It was the greatest thing. Oh man. And then and then the fight with Strahd came up. And then he was banished, and then Strahd used the anti-magic area, and it was like, oh man, I can't rely on telekinesis. I can't do a damn thing against him. Uh, yeah, but the, it, it was it was so much fun using telekinesis when I had access to it. It was like, okay, it's just this one guy we have to worry about. Not anymore. Telekinesis. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's because I think the great thing is like it lasts for a minute and you can change. It's like you can kind of move it around to different characters or something like that. Yeah. And the addition- it, it, it it takes me out of the combat because I have to use an action every turn to sustain it on a person. But then it's just you take um, one ally out of the equation to take out a really big threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was able to it. it, it I felt like it balanced itself pretty well. Yeah. Plus, the other thing is we were 11th level by the time we went for um, Strahd. Um, as for me with my build, uh, my car- so I'm playing as Garo. And Garo actually started, I think it's like two monk, one cleric or something around there. Maybe, maybe it was one, two. Anyway, point is, is that a big part of his build was that I wanted to play as a cleric, but I this is going to be the pettiest shit. I don't like him wearing chain mail. Because it's oh like, I God. want, like, the priest, like, oh, he's wearing just, like, cleric robes. But, like, I don't, I don't want him to wear chainmail. So what I did is I put, <laughs> I made, gave him an armored defense and min-maxed his dex and his wisdom score. So that way he can just walk around with, like, a quarterstaff and he could just look like a regular guy with, like, robes on. Uh, <laughs> which is uh, very expensive to do. Uh, but anyway, as, as the game played on um i started like oh i actually need more cleric because we don't really have healing and then later on i'm like no actually never mind we need damage because like he's you know we we need to do some damage and the problem was is that monks actually so i do flurry of blows and the problem is that the the strikes are not magic you know they don't count as magic you have to hit like six level but because i put like three levels in cleric i had to wait until like ninth level before like my punches were suddenly magical and it sucked because we were fighting like werewolves and we were fighting vampires and stuff and everything was like resistant to my yeah, attacks if really not a... that line. 
Yeah. And so I kept like in the, like I'd have other attacks that I would do, but it wasn't until I hit like ninth level that finally I got the key strike. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> cause I had min maxed my decks, but I couldn't punch anything, you know? And so it was like, <sighs> um, I had, I had the plus one weapon, which was, which was nice. Um, but then also he like the, the druid or sorry, the, the feign stuff made him like really, really powerful. Like he had all the, like, the druid can trips and then he could do the plant gra grasping vine plant growth and then he could also uh transport via plants i think and then he could also he had stone skin that was like the most like he like garo is probably one of the most powerful characters i've played because he has permanent stone skin so all the damage coming in is like half um but it's like you don't feel that powerful because it's like you get like a lot of times when we go into the fights, we'd be at like half health or like no hit dice and we get mm. half hit dice every like long rest or something. So I'd be going to the fight at like 20 HP or something. I'm like, Fuck. that was terrifying each time that we ended up going. In, we're, we're like, OK, we fought a good fight like we're at low health. Ah oh, man, we got a lot of time to kill. Dang it, dang it. Ah, uh, it's it's not night yet and it's so many days until the wedding and or so many days until we're invited to a dinner. Um and then it's like, "Oh, here's another encounter." It's like, "Oh no, are we going to survive?" It's like you know, Those were that, intense. Yeah, on that note, I'm I'm so happy I ended up playing a warlock because it was all those little short rests where I kept on getting my spells back. And like it was, I, I feel like it was only because we were playing either the story we were playing or the way we were playing or uh, whatever it was. And like we had a lot of short rests this entire campaign and it ended up working really well for me. So that was, I was super happy about that. <laughs> Oh yeah, you could almost count the long rest you had on one hand throughout the whole campaign. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Uh huh. Actually, you would uh, you technically need two because it it's ten days. I think it's it was seven days when we got to Amber Temple. Then we had three days for the wedding, or something like that. Yeah, so it was like nine yeah. long rests or something. That sounds right. And Wait, I forgot to mention. I'm looking at my notes, and I feel like I totally dicked over Michael by not mentioning this. Gouda's special eyes, her rays. That's Some my more, favorite part about playing broken homebrew. I yes. think I've ever created <laughs> because I get a roll in the wild magic table every time I use my eye beams. Uh, that's my favorite. I love rolling on tables so much and it's wild magic, which is so good. Yeah, because it's like I didn't exactly know the specifics of each player's character, but it was mm. it felt like every turn good is rolling on the wild magic table. Yes, like, that's yes. Uh, that's a lot of dice rolls you're doing over there. <laughs> <laughs> Because I got to use multiple eye beams. So I was like Dazing Ray or Disintegration, Moonbeam, um, Death Rays. And then if I use them, I got to roll twice on the Wild Magic Table later in the game and then choose one, which was the best ever. So thank you for that, Michael. That was fun for me. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, I think we talked about in the DM chat of how it's like every, like each of your characters, especially in the final fight, had something to worry about. And Gouda's was... I literally can't plan for this because who knows what the hell is going to happen. But that's the fun part. Yeah. Unless it's fireball. I, I yes, I was scared to death so many times that you were going to launch a fireball in the middle of us. <laughs> like no, we don't die because of a vampire onslaught. It's because Gouda let go of a fireball <laughs> unexpectedly. Look, that happens only twice. Only twice. By, by, by not my choice, okay? <laughs> I didn't have I didn't have control twice over it. In a row. Yeah. That was a funny what? shit. I rolled a seven. What's a seven? Oh my god. And we I, okay, were got so counted. lucky we didn't have a cart full of ar arcane fire next to us every time. <laughs> you know no, it still happened once, which is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. I just I remember that like oh I rolled a seven I'm like what's that oh, oh thank God he got countered and like okay next turn what did I roll this time an eight oh yeah. what's that oh shit pow <laughs> look no one told Garo to hide behind Esmeralda's cart okay like to be fair we were all running away I wasn't away. hiding behind it I was just next to it I was like <laughs> ten feet away from it. <laughs> 
Damn it. <laughs> Man, did Gar- was Garl the one who got the worst friendly fire in the campaign? I think yes. so because I, I so. yeah because I got I got the radiant from Boshak and then I got the um oh, who was it then Guda um and then the alchemist fire uh from oh, Esmeralda right. yeah so I got I got nuked pretty hard. Um, you're in Boshak's kind of cold a couple of times. <laughs> oh yeah yeah. Oh that that amber temple yeah. fight right. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> So uh, the next question I have is um, what is your guys' favorite NPC and worst NPC? Like which one, which one did your character like both from like, okay, did your character get along with and your character hated? Ah, shit. That's a good question. Besides Rahidin, right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, actually, uh, I think I'll, I'll think I'll rephrase the question. Which ones were your favorite NPC as as players? Because we already kind of uh, talked about like characters yeah. you didn't get along with. Yeah. Uh, Does it count if it's a two for one? <laughs> okay, what, what is it? it? Yeah. What is it? <laughs> Rictavio slash Van Richten. <laughs> They're technically oh, the same. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I love them both that, yeah. so much. Rictavio is the only one that has a sense of humor and enjoyed Gouda's puns. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, and I love that Van Richten was such like a crotchety old man. I like, totally fed up with the shit, but he's such a good guy at heart. He was still going around casting healing word and healing everybody. You know, we he all know we're like dum-dums, but he still does it because he's a good guy. All right. Yeah, I went from, ah, oh, guten tag, it is wonderful to meet you all, to... Oh my god, can you please stop going down? I'm wasting so many spells picking you back up. <laughs> oh, or how about when Krusk accepted the bite from the werewolf and he's oh like, my god. you oh my idiot! <laughs> you <laughs> fucking <laughs> crazy! Oh my god. Um, I think my fair, uh, like, I really like Strahd. I know that's <laughs> like, I'm very, like uh, as, as a character, he's just great. He's a great villain. Yeah, like, the way Michael played him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the smart. I, I, I saw at least half of the other video right now, and it was oh, he's just a fucking incel, and you know what? <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to fight that. That'd be depressing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like uh, what's her? What was her name? Um, she she was the the hag that ended up. She she wanted to be good. Oh, Gertruda. Yeah. Gertruda, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh man, I thought she was she was a really interesting uh NPC. Like mm. like at first when she when she went ethereal cuz uh when oh, he approached yeah. her and then oh, it's so like depressing. oh crap, we're going to have to fight her later. Like she's she's oh, going so evil. Depressing. And then later on it's like you lied to me, Gouda, about Lancelot. Stop it, like, it still hurts. And at the very end, it's like, no, she wants to be good. It's like, ah, a hag yeah. with a heart. That's so cool. Yeah. I can't believe all you guys are just like brushing past this guy. Seriously. Best NPC. Best NPC. NPC guy? Godfrey? Yeah. Lancelot? Oh, Lancelot. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> God. How dare you all forget him? <laughs> he led us to Gertruda in the first place. All right? Um, <laughs> Lancelot carried this team. Look, it's still a sore spot, okay? I'm I don't like talking shocked. about him. See, I'm kind of shocked nobody said Esmeralda because I think the point where Esmeralda got killed was probably the most depressing for all of you guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, realistically, as I was going to say Esmeralda. <laughs> no, but Esmeralda's such an obvious choice. You know, it takes two to have that <laughs> scene. <laughs> Estrad was in that scene as well, so... Oh, yeah, I, I just took Esmeralda as taken for granted. That's why I didn't mention her. She's, she's just taken it for granted as being one of the most lovable characters you can have, so I'm just like... Okay, everyone knows Esmeralda. Who else? Rick Fabio, no. he's the MVP. MVP. I don't know. I, Esmeralda had, had it all, all right? She had a handicap that did not slow her down for shit. But she had a tragic background and was trying to do good by the world still. She found a chance with a group 
that she wasn't totally sure can pull it off, but gave them that chance. All right, she is the goddamn star of this show. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then she she was down. In oh my bit- god! Can we not talk about? <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> Too soon. Too it soon. Is always we live the experience because of a fireball. God. All, the, all because you couldn't counterspell a fifth level fireball twice in a row. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I don't care what people say about counterspell. Okay, like it is one of the best spells ever, and I don't care. Okay. So so uh the next question um someone asked uh did the players ever consider assaulting the dark powers as a way to free barovia no Uh, no i never saw that we well i never saw that i remember us as players having that conversation like well you might want to do it and then it's like well we we don't how how are we gonna kill them and it's like yeah damn it I, i remember that too and like they're basically lesser gods you know, you know that that's like up to level twenty, and I don't think anybody wants to stay in Barovia that long. <laughs> yeah, and and so I think, um, and also I think I we had been talking about how it's like Strahd had a proposition for us, like when we had first come to the castle, of like, do you guys want to kill the um the dark powers? But like, we didn't even hear the proposition because the second Rahadin was like, "You guys need to split up the party." I'm like, "No," and then tried to kill him. But that was one of the options for the endings. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. You guys were talking. Um, no, I, I'm I'm really glad we didn't, because uh, like as as Boshak, it was his his hatred was just funneled towards Strahd. You know, he had no goals beyond just finishing Strahd. Yeah, yeah. I think by that, I think that that was where the narrative was like leading us in the end. And I think doing something else would kind of be like veering off course per se. And then the other thing is I do actually, once again, I like the ending. So um, I kind of didn't want to. Gudo would not have been down to attack magic dad. I will say that. How dare you? Well, um, that's going to lead in the next question. Did Gouda ever figure out what was up with Mavaris? No, no, no. Courtney, the player, had to ask Michael off the table. Wait, wait, hold up again and re retell me what, what's going on again. Yes, uh, yep. the yeah. death tyrant was bad. <laughs> He's a <laughs> bad guy. Here's the thing, though. Like, it's spoiler. She only figured out he was bad like months after the campaign. <laughs> no, even at the end, when like, if she ever figured out that she couldn't leave the demi planes of dread. She still would never have believed that it would be because Mavris is a bad guy. Okay? Like, she's well aware of the fact that her magic is kind of untamable. So the fact that she has this sort of, like, magical boost from another source means it must be good. Because she does good. <laughs> so the means are That's, fine. I can't argue with that. That's good. perfect yeah. logic. <laughs> so it's, it's, all, it's all good. It's fine. Nothing's it's wrong. It's all good. Yeah, um, please send help. Dark. So me out of oh, Gouda, Gouda. <laughs> oh, yes, Gouda. I mean, hey, she was able to summon unicorns. Like, that's got to be good, right? Oh, she she will keep triggering wild magic until she gets a school of flumps and a herd <laughs> of unicorns. Oh, yeah, I and think... I think we abdlibbed another ending where it was like Gouda becomes a dark lord or something and how suddenly all these unicorns start vanishing and get pulled into this realm because oh, Gouda yeah. wants friends and so she keeps casting <laughs> wild magic and so suddenly Barovia becomes this trap for it's unicorns. A ranch. It's a ranch. It's a final resting place. Don't say that. That sounds bad. Um, if anything, ranch. she wants Shadowfane to come back, okay? So she has to keep trying until Shadowfane comes back. Please. Oh, man. <laughs> and Please. the thing so, is that Shadowfane that... never appears, so all the unicorns are leaving ex- the existence. God, that's like the biggest accidentally evil ending. No, right there. Don't yes. Don't the unicorns get the together. Way. They have a meeting. Like, what's happening? They're vanishing one by one. But they go to yeah. Ravenloft. They see just all these trapped unicorns. You know? <laughs> and flumps. Nothing but and flumps. And flumps. <laughs> she and would train the flumps. Yeah. Please, yeah. Yeah. Go, go, unicorn, yeah. adventures, <laughs> unicorn adventures end up, you know, forming a party to overthrow the evil and, Lord Gouda. And Friends. also, you can you can go. 
<laughs> people people brought up like, oh, you know, Gouda could like because she had said like, oh, I won't be able to see my family again. And I'm like, well, actually, if she controls Barovia, she can kidnap people and pull them in. Oh my <laughs> so, god, that's so that's, that's so dark. Or just yeah. invite them. Well, I mean, no, or invite no, them and this... just not let them leave. Hey, oh yeah. yeah. No. You want to see your family, right? Barovia sucks so hard. Every day in Barovia sucks. Nobody wants to from Barovia. But I, I think you said like that's the perfect weather for you because you actually like the, the cloudy cold. Oh no, yeah. So player Courtney would be down to live in Barovia. It's cloudy, it's gloomy, totally awesome. <laughs> but Gouda's not. She is a she's a sunflower and she needs that sweet, sweet vitamin D and not Barovia. Mm-hmm. So the but next question is what would happen if Gouda had actually taken over the throne? Yeah, Michael, what would happen? So, yeah, this is uh, kind of a mixed thing. Um, So, yeah, depending on the different ones, like Petrina is the one you saw where it's like she becomes this uber powerful vampire um, arc wizard, arch wizard. If it was Victor, he'd basically turn into something akin to like a mad mage type of deal, but on the whole Barovia scale. So it just turns to this horrible just Calvin, because all he wants to do is get out, get out. So he'd be constantly oh expo- ex- like experimenting with all this teleportation stuff. But Victor also would never have agreed to it. You basically would have had to have forced him to be it. Um, with Arabelle, uh, with Arabelle and Gouda, it's in a way kind of similar in a sense where they go on. They're both kind of pretty good-ish people, but they're so non-intimidating that it basically <laughs> all the other – Demi planes look and go, oh, we can invade Barovia now because Strahd's not there anymore. And so they'd be having to deal with these constant incursions from outside forces. Ooh. Yeah, Gouda would not make a good war chief. Um, I can be honest about that. <laughs> no, she'd be dying all the time, probably doing something very heroic slash stupid. And then, <laughs> if we're gonna do it like what slash percentage of the heroic stupid are we? <laughs> like <Yeah>. percentage wise <laughs> but, yes, but then she'd come back and then her evil clone would appear and be giving insider information to the enemy army oh my <gasps> okay you would be the hero Guda. <laughs> I know you'll always be the hero always the hero um so the next question is um uh what happened to the werewolves ah okay so the werewolves was basically uh you guys had convinced them to wait a week so they um emil and zulenka went met up with the rest of their pack and were getting ready but then you guys won so now all of a sudden clouds cleared mist cleared they looked and went we can get out now. So they bailed, went to a different, the neighboring demiplane. And that's actually the first mission that uh, Gouda and Krusk went on was to try and locate them so they can try and save that little werewolf pup that she knows is also from Waterdeep. Yeah. yeah. And it's like the first domino leading to Gouda's constant adventuring where she's trying to go on these adventures to find somebody in trouble or something amiss and every time she's like about to do it, it's just comes up just short until something else comes up. Uh, and then most likely in the battle, she keeps on dying over and over again. So it creates over, new yeah. villains. Great. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Also, we're going to be going until about 930 ish. Just FYI. Um, Ooh, I'm fine with that. Okay. okay. Next question. What did we use the rings of spell storing for? One literally one spell. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I I think I, I think I, yep. I used one spell. I I want to say I used one spell. I I forget. I think I think I stored so sacred flame in it, and then there I used it. it once, and that was it. Okay. Oh, no. What was it? Sacred flame, or what was the name of it? So it was I Bochax. I used it three times, but it was because I kept putting flame um flame strike. Yeah, because I kept there putting Boshax flame strike because he said, "Oh, this does five d six uh fire and five d six radiant damage, and it's this range, this thing." And I'm like, "Stop! You had me at ten d six damage," and so I, <laughs> I or no, no, sorry, I think it's like no, I think it's like three d six, three d six or something. 
No, it was like 46 and 46. Okay. It was, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like half fire lot. and half radiant. Yeah, 46 fire, 46 radiant. And I'm like, yes, please. And plus it's an AoE attack. And so I actually used it quite a bit because what would happen is that we'd go into a fight. I'd bah, bah, use it. And then during any kind of a short rest or when, before night, I'm like, hey, Boshak, like it's empty. And I'd put it in. And so I would start out a fight using it. Um, and then Gouda had scrying, scrying in hers. Yes. And yes. she never... She That's would. not true. No, I used it to scry on Arena. For the longest time, I held off on using it because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get it again because I don't have access to scrying. So then Rickon had to fill it up, and then Boshak was like, "I can get scrying. Just, just use it." So I did. <laughs> I should not have used it on Arena. In hindsight, I could have used it on who was it, Michael? You said the Lovebirds. Was it Godfrey? You don't gotta know. <laughs> this is the entire campaign. It's me screaming into the void at Michael. Oh, uh, but no, I would. I had given you some information later on that it's like if you had spied on, uh, decided to spy on Ismark, you'd see that oh, he and the uh, yeah. uh, one of the Bastani barmaids from Barovia actually started having a thing in my campaign. Aww. Oh, cool. Oh yeah, they were the only two alive in the fucking village after that, huh? I mean, it kind of seemed like it after Donovich unleashed the zombie horde. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they were the only two survivors we found. Yeah. Man. Okay. That was funny. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, that is actually, I think we've gotten kind of to the end of kind of the major questions. Uh, so is there anything else you guys kind of want to generally talk about the campaign? I uh, I think we accidentally, with the favorite, least favorite NPCs, only talked about favorites. I don't think we ever actually talked about what was everyone's least favorite NPC. Well, actually, I kind of, honestly, I just said most hated. I kind of switched it to most hated because it's like That's least right. favorite is like, which one did you as a player prefer the word like was the shittiest that Michael ran? And it's like, you can't really ask that question because it's like, I don't know. There's like, oh, there was a boring there's a, there's character an that we met on the road, I think. Um, I think uh, Courtney has someone they she oh, wants to go yeah. on. There is a correct answer to that. The answer is Vasily, a.k.a. Strahd. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> he yes. this oh, to be oh. like this dopish accountant with a very silly name. And he endears himself to us. Gives us oh. cursed weapons, and at the end, when we think he, um, he's betrayed us to work with Strahd, no, it's not. It's Rahadin giving Strahd, as Vasily, his own money. Oh, yep. my God. God. There was that one moment when Vasily, like, went to the uh, the abbot's temple oh, with, yes. with us there, and I was freaking out. I was like, how did he get it? How, how did he get in here? Like, we have to leave. And like he knows something, we gotta go right now. And everybody just like, oh no, let's talk to him. And like, God it's damn it! It's it, silly. Actually, what's funny is I think it was mainly Gar. Like actually, so Gouda trusts everyone, and then <laughs> wow. trusts said nothing. And then I think my character was like, no, nah, no. Nah. Like I mean, it'd be reasonable that Vasily would would. Well, I'm like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. Vasily's here. Who cares? Because I was actually just thinking it was Fiona was the one that was giving him the information. So it's like you know, whatever. She's evil. <laughs> so i thought he was just the go-between and then you were the one that pointed out like about the cursed weapons and everything oh. yeah yeah and i wanted to dip i wanted to get way out of there like way before and i was like when we finally had that conversation and like okay i can at least try to get this information out of him and then he just turned into strad as ah oh, shit <laughs> I, I, I actually um, am rethinking this about the, the idea of the most hated NPC. Uh-huh. And it just, I just remember now that freaking nightmare that oh, kept yeah, on Bucephalus. going at Ariel. <laughs> and oh, my, oh my God, Bucephalus. I kept on trying to kill that fucking horse. <laughs> How many, how many Matt 20 saves did I roll in a row for Bucephalus? Too many. Too, too many, many. Too many. <laughs> for that freaking nightmare. So, <laughs> so if you want to talk about ridiculous uh, saves, uh, at the end, uh, there was a period where Strahd had made had done like an anti-magic field around himself or something oh, like that. Yeah. And we're trying to disrupt it. And so we keep punching Strahd. And the problem is that Strahd is a resistant to non-magical weapons. So we're just like hitting him. 
And so we're not doing that much damage because he's resistant. Um, and then it's like, okay, make a save. And he literally just could not roll. All he had to do is roll below a, or I think, I think a five and below or something like that. And he could not roll below a five for the life of him. Oh, and I it's like, we're just, plus eight. I think, I think it was a, he had like a plus seven or eight. So he had to roll below a three and he was just not. I say I can double check. I'm pretty sure. I'm pre- pretty sure Ben's right that his like con was a plus five. So it was. It had to roll like be- it was either a five or less or below a five. And we're doing just yeah, just because no one could deal more oh, than because he definitely did not get below a five. I know that for certain because no I was because I was watching him roll the dice and it's like come on five and it's like no and it's we literally spent three hours of that conversation just punching him over and over and he that he was, gave. Yeah. The thing is, is that he doesn't, so uh, he was not rolling behind a DM screen. We were just watching the dice roll, and he could yeah. not get below a five on any of the thing. And what, yeah. the funniest thing was that we eventually, like, we beat him, and he, like, we beat him, beat him, beat him, and eventually he fails, and his concentration goes away on the anti-magic. And what was, another reason why the anti-magic was such a pain in the butt was because the sun sword and the amulet of the raven kind don't work in the anti-magic. Yeah. And so are we don't have any sunlight and so that's a big deal so we're like oh we got to get rid of this anti-magic field which strahd has and so we just keep punching him over and over and he just he cannot roll below a five and then he eventually drops it and then i think he had to do like an attack roll at advantage or something and he rolled like two twos and i'm like great now it's finally coming out it's just like left and right God, <laughs> bad rolls. Yeah. Radiant, was, radiant, radiant, radiant. Because yeah, it was either that or it, I, after the anti magic went down. Which yeah, for anyone wondering, no, he does not natively have that level of spell casting. But I boosted it up because it was more fun that way. Plus, uh-huh. plus, um, it's also the other thing is we're all eleventh level and we have five companions or something. It was we had Victor, we had Godfrey, two unicorns, and. Van Ez and Van Richten. Van Richten as um we had a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Those were some big fights I mean, at the end. To be fair, Victor canceled out with um Godfrey, okay? Victor was not MVP in that battle whatsoever. <laughs> that little boy got charmed straight from the beginning, just sitting there in a corner. God. <laughs> we should <laughs> not have brought him. I know. We should because I can't trust him to be alone. He's an uh-huh. untrustworthy no. little boy. Best to have this untrustworthy little boy in our group. Yeah. Why does he get charmed so easily? He's a little boy. No. He flash of he There you go. <sighs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> but yeah, no. Final battle. Final battle. That was that was fun because I was I, I'd still been or I kind of told everybody in the. Uh, last interview that that was probably the most stressed out I was figuring out how to try to pull that off and it just I loved it and speaking of the flame strike <laughs> ring that is the was the final thing that to- ended up taking out Strahd was it because yeah Strahd teleported away Garl followed after him Strahd was at the top of the of the tomb right where the unicorn had gotten shot and he just flame striked oh yeah yeah I remember that because he was like surrounded or something yeah, and it was also Man. because we were in the anti-magic field for a while, we still had all of our spells and stuff because it's like we we weren't able to cast some of that stuff. Yeah, so we were able to basically unleash everything on him all at once once that shield went down. <laughs> oh, there also uh, another thing is that I wanted to talk about a little bit was that early on, um, I talk a lot like we just keep losing fights and there were actually a lot of fights that we won, but they ended up getting cut because they were kind of like speed bumps. Like uh, we're walking along the road and we fight some undead, you know, we fight them and it's a good scene. It's fun to play out. But like when you think about narratively, it's like, you know, it's you're fighting zombies. Like there's not anything like narratively that kind of changes over there. And I think it was like the orphanage got cut because I was just like, this is in Velaki. There was just so much stuff going on there's a lot yeah, of different missions and man the ember temple was such a, a clusterfuck like there's just so many things going on and we'd like go into a room and we'd explore and then we'd leave and go to a different room and stuff and i'm like look okay i'm i'm taking the notes uh, and i'm like uh, i'm still so mad fucking 
Krusk over here, uh, like Bosch Axe, just like spell slinging with this other thing that's hidden in darkness. Krusk, and I'm gonna walk over here. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Get the fuck back over here! Like, oh, no, open this door, you son of a bitch. Now, see, Alan, I thought you were going to go with the moment in the Amber Temple where you got to just cheese a fight with a golem through a wall. Oh, that was so much fun, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we see a golem through a crack in the wall or something, and I can just sickening radiance right there. And it's just, you know, he couldn't go past a door or something, and he couldn't reach us through the crack in the wall. Yeah, it was a crack in the wall. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I was, like, here's a sickening radiance in your entire area of living. That you can't get out of. <laughs> and the the problem is that like another stone giant or stone golem would have like broken the wall to get in, but the problem is because he is he has to protect this location, he has to protect the temple, he cannot he doesn't like there's no reason for him to break the wall. <laughs> um there was wasn't so lucky. There was another funny scene in the Amber Temple where it was like, I think Gouda was exploring and then she sees glowing eyes and they're like, Garo, can you come over here? I'm like, what? And they're like, okay. So I come over there and I get three fireballs. Um, <laughs> I counterspelled one of them. I, she counterspelled one of the, thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, but like she used me to like kind of set off the, the trap. And then I think there was, there was a line where it's like, who knows? It might not be evil. And then I think Boshak said, it's a hole in the ground. Nothing good ever comes from a hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was also funny how like Boshak, I think, I think there was some percentage of the audience that's like, maybe Boshak is metagaming. And it'd be like, there's a cave of murder. And Boshak's like, I don't want to go into that cave of murder. And it's like, <laughs> how does he know? <laughs> it's like, no, Boshak is just an asshole. He's just, he's just a smart ass. That's it. And he was an intelligence character. He maybe read some books of like some adventurers dying or something, you know? And that was, yeah, that, was, that was it. Whenever there was someone doing int roles, it was always Boshak. So that's how his, <laughs> his character like always knew what was going on. And oh, when there yeah. were charisma checks to do it, it was always Garo. Yep. Yep. I got really lucky in a lot of those intelligence roles, like those lore roles, and like, hey, do I know what, like what he know what this is? Like intro adventure. He has a sage background, so he's probably familiar with libraries and stuff like that. <laughs> so I just said that that's the only reason I brought it up and like what he know what this is, and like, okay, roll. Oh hey, a good roll. Yeah, yeah, you know this much. And like, okay. Hey guys, stop. <laughs> <laughs> There's and there's like a landmine and we're just whacking wailing on it to like <laughs> yeah. what's this thing? It's not moving around and you're like you should probably not do that. Stop being dumb. You no, know, now that I'm thinking again about um the fight with Strahd, I'm thinking about that very emotional scene at the very end where Gouda opens up the coffin where Irina is in and she's a vampire spawn. And it was just that very emotional scene. It's like, Irina? And it's oh, like, she bit me? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and she tries to bite you, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, at that point, then I couldn't roll above a five, so tried. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then we, and then Irina got uh, turned back because we found, because uh, there was a luck blade, and then the luck blade mm. used the wish spell to change her back. And also, I'm yeah. realizing we're doing this Q&A and we're like answering questions, but there's another part of me that's like, we're going to have a lot more questions coming up as we're in. Because that, that's always the problem with Q&A is like, you're answering questions, but like other questions are coming up as you're answering questions yeah <laughs> because it's like, like people like just seeing that twitter post on your youtube thing for questions right now and they probably have some good questions too mm-hmm. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. well as I, I left my twitter in the last video so if people have any other questions directed at me you feel free to message me there uh, yeah, does it, so uh, we're kind of reaching the end of it, I guess, because uh, we're kind of wrapping up. Um, does anyone have anything else they want to say at the end? Uh, it was an awesome module. Oh, yeah, it was phenomenal. Really fun. good. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Oh, yeah. I actually really wanted to bring something up, too. Uh, I was just talking with, with uh, Courtney earlier, too, is uh, a lot of people were, seems like, I, I 
I, I'm really surprised at how popular Boshak was, just looking at all the comments on the videos and everything. And it reminded me that, like, in a lot of other games I've played with evil or, or e either just evil or just chaotic characters, people take it as an excuse to just do whatever the fuck they want. And I was telling her too, and it was like, like the first thing I thought of when I was playing Boshek, when I made Boshek, um, was, okay, like you want to play evil, you want to play this this route, you want to play this asshole, sure. Like the most important thing when you make him is like, first and foremost, you're making a team player, you're you're playing a team game, so. It, it, it was the kind of inspiration when I made him. And, like, he has to have some kind of inspiration to want to stay with the party. He has to have a reason to, to stay with the group. And it's, just, like, I, I feel like I've seen too many characters either just lean towards chaotic or evil. And, like, they want to be the next... Uh, they want to be, like, the next Lex Luthor or, like, the next Joker... And they go way too far into it, and they just end up ruining it for everybody because they think they're like, okay, they deserve their own arc. And D&D yeah, is just not that kind of game. Yeah, and plus, it's like if the motives are like oppositional to the party, it's like, look, we wouldn't we wouldn't help each other, like we wouldn't hang out. But like, there are evil characters and evil motives that can be kind of along the same lines as the party. Hmm. And yeah, it, and like, with with Boshak in this setting, it wasn't hard because it was just like his greatest chance of survival is with the group. That was the smart decision to play. That was like, it, no matter if he's chaotic or if he's evil, the smartest thing to do would be to stay with the group. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> I think that's a good way to play him. Yeah, but yes, guys. Say for my first big campaign, you all were the perfect best party and players a dm could hope for no i'm gonna kiss you in the mouth today whenever covid <laughs> is done like look, yes, hey, no, no. that's not until alan, that's how you get covid over. that's how you get covid alan um but anyway i think we are done here uh so thank you everyone for being here uh, appreciate it. Thank you for coming out. I hope you guys uh, learned something about and got to talk with all the players, got to do a meeting. And I realized that we did, we're going to be doing basically two hour and a half Q and a things. And the entire thing was about six hours. So it's like, we're doing a Q and a that is half the length of the full thing anyway. So uh, That's do what happens when you don't edit. Yep. That is correct. <laughs> um, do you guys want to um, po pull any, or like promote any like, Twitter or anything like that. Uh, I, I, can, I don't use my Twitter. So. Yeah, same. It. I don't use Twitter. Just you and me then. Okay, got it. Well then. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you all for coming out. And uh, that's about it. Uh, hope you guys have a good day. So uh, goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.